What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the install portion of a two-part video series. So if you haven't seen our first video, check that one out. We actually ride a Torque TC1000 controller and Torque TM25 motor on this fully modified Suron Lightbeat. So if you guys haven't seen that, go watch it. But now it is time to jump back into the future and actually see how to install this controller how to install this motor, get them all set up in the app and talk about a lot of the details and why we really recommend running this combo. It is performing excellent. This is our buddy Sheldon's bike and we've been borrowing it for about two weeks. So we really need to get it back to him but we've really been enjoying riding this and have had a great experience with this Torp setup. So if you guys didn't see our last video, we worked with Darwin EV to get this set up. If you guys are interested in any Torp products, motors, controllers, hit him up, we do have a discount code down in the video description. Hit that subscribe button guys, let's jump back in the past and show you how to install these. Let's go. Okay guys, time to install our Torque TC1000 controller. As you can see, Sheldon has a very built up bike, some very nice components on this. He already has a Emoto Bros BAC4000 controllers that he's been running for a while. He's, he's okay with it, but it's not his favorite. So we're gonna try this Torque out. We also have an upgraded 60 volt EBMX battery. This is the 53 amp hour. So this is capable of providing a lot more power than this controller was capable of providing. So we're gonna swap all this out, starting with the controller. Let's get this going. First step of business is gonna be to flip our breaker right down in there if we can reach it, unplug our battery, pull our battery out, and we're gonna take that controller off. Not a very nice mounting system, I'll be honest. There it is. Okay, we have the old controller removed, we got his old display wired out, and we are ready for our new controller. So let's show what comes in the box of this Torp TC1000 kit. So we have the controller itself here. This is larger than the TC500 and it has a lot more capability, higher power numbers, higher torque phase amp numbers. This thing is solid. It's potted, it's heavy, beefy feeling, really nice waterproof connector here on the top. This is gonna be your plastic cover that mounts right here and will basically cover up everything, keep it looking super clean. We have opted for the extra thumb regen brake lever. So this will go on the left side of the bar next to the display and you can actually use that as a brake. We've also added the Torp display. This has a lot more added functionality. It's gonna do your speed and everything too where the stock Suron just doesn't really have a display at all. So this can act as our mode button, everything like that. This is our new wire harness. So these two big ones are gonna plug into the bike and then these are for some of our utilities like our regen and our display. Those connect right here on the top. So we're gonna start by installing the controller portion. We have to first remove, we'll kind of get our wires out of the way. These are some extenders that were on the BAC controller. We're gonna remove our extensions because we don't need those. And then we're gonna remove these two metal brackets. Our controller actually just mounts straight to the frame right here on this plate. All right, it is time to mount our controller. We got lots of room to work with here. We have our brackets removed. You'll see two holes on each side, top and a bottom. We're gonna be using the top holes. We're gonna be using the two screws provided. They provide you with four. These are the two smaller screws. So you'll notice that these top holes are a little bit bigger in size than these screws, but that's okay. They're just gonna go through the hole and you're gonna mount them to these two middle of the six screws right there and it will sit totally flush, just like that. Line it all up, screw them in. Okay, next up on our list is to mount our motor phase wires up to these three points. There is a B, G, and a Y for blue, green, and yellow. You'll just fasten those down and be good to go. We got green right in the middle here. Okay, next up we have our positive and our negative. So positive goes down here on the bottom. And negative goes on the top. Man, this controller is so easy to install. Man, so many other controllers, you are literally just fighting all of these wires to get them to go. And everything is just the perfect length to go right where you need it to go. Nice job, Torp. 
Okay, and we'll tuck that, tuck this guy on the side. This is your other wires that come down under here, your motor sensors. To remove the, the extra wire harness that that old controller had, we had to move our breaker out of the way, but you wouldn't necessarily have to do that if you were removing your stock controller. Okay, while we have this top part opened up, you can see we have quite a bit of room in here. We're gonna make sure we get these wires routed and then we'll plug them in down below. So we don't necessarily have to mount these to our bars yet, but we're gonna tuck them through our fork here. So that is our display and then our regen. Also tuck it right through our fork leg. We'll just dangle those up over the bar over here. And now we have to tuck both of these all the way down. So we're gonna have to find a way to get these all the way down to plug into our controller harness. So just keep fishing them down until they come out down below. Okay, we're gonna plug these five guys into here. Okay, we got the first one in. Let's get our second big one. That one's in. Let's get this one. It's gonna go to here. Okay, and then we have our display, which we pull this one that has a cover because you don't have to use this after this torp display. So they cover it in case you don't use it. That snaps in and we got our regen levers, this white one. Okay, all five are connected. Now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna connect it to the top. I believe it goes that way. Wait for, till you hear the click. It's a nice click. Okay, now your job is to tuck all of this back up in here. Make sure all your wires and routing is nice and clean. You'll get your key slot back on. That's just two screws to remove. And you have to do that to be able to route these up. And the way we're gonna mount these is your regen lever you want pretty much right next to your grip. So we'll probably end up sliding this brake a little bit and then probably putting our display over here his stock eco mode and sport mode switch is broken. That's not a problem because we'll be doing that on this, but he still needs this for his horn. Time for our cover. Now we do have an aftermarket skid plate, but it is still working just fine. We tested it. So we're gonna tuck the bottom into our skid plate. Kind of have to wiggle it down just a little bit and then it will fit under our horn and line up right here. Two top bolts. Those you will use the two longer four millimeter Allen bolts that they come provided with. Do that and then we're gonna fire it up. Okay, quick message from the future. If you are only installing this controller, we'll show you how to do the full setup with the app and everything, how to set up your regen throttle and your new display. Wait till later in the video for that. Right now we're gonna jump into showing you how to install the motor as well and then we'll do all of that setup later. But if you're just doing controller, we'll still show you how to set it up. All right, it is now time to install that upgraded Torque TM25 motor. We're gonna go with pretty much the same process here as the controller. We're gonna turn our bike off and we're gonna take our battery out so that we're safe because we are gonna be disconnecting those motor phase wires from the controller. So we're gonna unplug our battery, take it out, and then we're gonna drop our skid plate and start getting the motor off. All right, first step is to get our controller cover plate off so we can access those motor phase wires. Now we're gonna undo these three, boom, boom, boom. Next up, we're gonna get our skid plate out of the way. So we got one bolt on this side, one bolt on the other side. I already took it off and saved these little pieces. Drop that out of the way. I think we can just leave it there, but we may have to take off the other two later on. Next up, we're gonna remove this plastic cover. So our first formula Allen is here at the top. Next one is right here. Take both those out, put them to the side. Our cover should come out. Okay, now we need to unplug our hall sensor from the main wire harness. So we're gonna follow it from the motor right here into our wire boot. Find it, so it's this one right here. Okay, so now that is unplugged. So now we are fully disconnected from the bike apart from the, mo the bolts holding the motor in. Okay, next up, we're gonna remove our motor nut. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna loosen all four motor bolts. You have one here, one here, and the exact same on the other side. Don't remove any of them, just loosen them. Now we're gonna grab this and we're gonna fold it down. 
That will allow us to literally pivot. You guys saw it's loose, so we pivoted the motor up so that we can then get this belt off. So you'll have to work it just a little bit, but your belt will come off, and we'll just kind of tuck it out of the way there. And now you can remove, I would recommend that remove these bottom two first, and you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of support held on the motor. It helps to have a buddy to, to do this. You'll take off the bottom ones first, hand that over to Reed. He'll remove his bottom, and then we'll take these two top ones off, and our motor will literally just fall out. So you gotta be holding it, because it's like 20 pounds. Okay, both bolts are out from the other side. This is our last bolt. Okay, we're out. You'll have a spacer here, and that piece, there's your motor. Let's put it next to this new one, and then we're gonna weigh the difference, there's two. That kind of lines them up. The, you'll notice the phase wires are on the opposite side, and you'll notice how much bigger they are because of how much power this motor is capable of running, and it is just, all around, bigger, beefier, heavier, 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 heavier. Oh, that's a lot thicker. Okay, now we're gonna move this over to this. Now, one thing to note is that this nut is reverse threaded. So your standard Suron nut is not, so you'll lose lefty-loosey to get it off. This one, you gotta lose, do lefty-loosey to tighten it, <laughs> if that makes sense. You're literally just gonna pull this off. So this has one slot. Line the slot up, put this on. And you'll see I'm threading it left backwards. Okay, at this time, you're just gonna get this nut on hand tight and then we're gonna do the exact opposite of how we put it in because you kinda need your belt on there, hold the brake and everything to get that snugged up enough. Now, we're gonna weigh these motors because we wanna see the actual difference in weight and we're gonna throw in a stock Telaria Sting R motor too to just sort of compare a little bit. This is our best bag for weighing, so we're gonna put this in there and give her away. We got our scale zeroed out, you can see. Oh, that is not very heavy, holy cow, 16. 16 pounds, so that's part of the, the big reason why the Suron is a lot lighter than other, other bikes because this motor, I think, is about four pounds lighter than this Sting R motor. So let's put that, actually we can just hang this. We'll lose a tiny bit of weight for the bag, but it's light, but you'll see the difference. So that's 19.2 pounds with no bag, so it would be even just a little bit more. So that's, heavy, heavy bag. So that's three pounds. Then this motor is heavier, but it's also by far the most capable. Twenty two point eight pounds. So we're 8 gaining eight pounds heavier. Uh six point eight pounds. Six point eight six point eight pounds heavier. So that's a big difference, you guys. That's gonna we're adding a bit of weight to this Suron here. Six pounds. It's a lot. Alright you guys, time to tighten the belt. So we're gonna hold the skid plate out of the way so it's not in the way. Lance, hold that. Get yourself useful. And we're gonna Use this thing, spacer. Get the belt real tight in there. Oh, that's too tight. Up one. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna tighten these bottom bolts. You can't see it, but I'm tightening the bottom bolt. That's great, Lance. Good job. And then we're gonna tighten our top bolts. Okay. Here you go. They're tight enough, we'll tighten them more later. All right, we just got our motor tightened down. You do not want your belt crazy tight. You want it to be able to move at least a little bit. This is pretty dang good. Whatever you do, do not forget to tighten your motor bolt. Remember, it's reverse threaded, so go backwards. All right, your next step is to plug your new motor encoder sensor into the existing plug. It is plug and play. Plug right in there, we'll tuck this up all nice, and then we may zip tie this back closed again. Just keep it all clean. And then now, 
we're going to connect our three motor phase wires. We've got blue, yellow, and green, and they're going to go to the same blue, green, BGY on here using those same existing screws that came with your controller. I'm okay, her. Okay, now that we got the phase wires all connected up, we got our encoder plugged in, we got our skid plate back on. Now we're just trying to make a little bit of room in our, because this is an aftermarket skid plate, and then we can tuck our Torp TC1000 cover back on. Okay, oh. those are bent out of the way just a little bit. Get that. Let's line up this wire up here. And we'll just put our two top screws in, and then we'll put our battery back in. Let's go ride it. Okay guys, let's get this controller and motor all set up in the Torp app. This is a super simple process, just follow this guide. If you're just installing the controller, follow the same guide. If you're doing both, follow the same guide. Okay, we're gonna go into our Torp controller app. We'll do this screen recording so you guys can see. It's gonna automatically, for me, connect to the device because I've already connected. But for you, you're gonna go to this far tab on the right, you're gonna go to scan Bluetooth. Right here, you're gonna select your controller. So Torque TC1000 is this controller. If you have a TC500, it'll say TC500. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. It will connect for you. And then immediately, we're gonna go into the update firmware. We're gonna do, you can either do full-fledged regular firmware or you can do beta firmware. There's two options. We're just gonna do beta firmware for this, um, but you can decide what you would like to do. We're gonna do our controller first. For us, we have no new updates, but if you guys have an update, go ahead and do it. Same with your display. If you have the upgraded Torp display, then you would do that. We are all good to go, so we're gonna go back out. We're gonna go into our calibration down below. So here's where you'll select what motor you're running. If you're running a stock motor, then you would select LightV X 260. We're gonna select the Torp TM25 motor. Make sure you have your bike on a stand or a five gallon bucket works great. We're gonna hit okay. And now it's gonna prepare calibration and actually start spinning the motor. Your motor's gonna run forwards, backwards, do some jolts, make some weird sounds. All of that's normal. As long as it says calibration is successful at the end, then you're good to go. If it doesn't, or if it times out for some reason, close your app, go back in, and it should let you do it again. Okay, motor detection completed successfully. We're gonna hit next. Here we're gonna calibrate our throttle. So you're gonna twist it to the max, then let go, hit next. And then now we're going to test our motor direction. So let's give it a little throttle. Looks like we're going in the right direction. If you guys got your motor phase wires connected wrong when you connected them to your controller, this would probably be spinning backwards. And there is actually a way that you can change the direction right here. So if you mess that up, that's fine. You can switch it right here in the app and you'll have no issues. So we're going to go ahead, finish and save. And then we are good. So now couple things we can do in this page, you can change your speed un units between miles per hour, kilometers, temperature, Fahrenheit, Celsius, so on. Um, speed calibration, this you're going to have to do a little bit of playing with to get your display accurate for GPS speed. So you can either use your phone to kind of figure out what a real GPS speed is and then adjust these values until this is accurate. You can also set up your sprocket size and your wheel diameter in inches to get you a good start. Okay guys, next up we're going to go to our next tab on the left. Here we can set up all of our modes. Now one thing that Torp does a really good job of is depending on what motor, battery, controller combo you select within their app, they give you really nice limits on what you're allowed to run and settings that aren't necessarily going to like blow up your components, right? They're not, they're not going to let you run too much power that your motor is capable of running. So that is one nice thing about Torp. We're going to go ahead and select our battery here. We're going to do 60 volt aftermarket because that's what we have select what you have, and then we can start messing with settings. Now, because we have this upgraded Torp display, we actually have a third mode called daily in addition to sport and eco mode. So we're gonna go turn that on real quick. If you're running a stock display, you would just have sport and eco and you can play with those settings accordingly. Okay. Next, we're gonna go into our peripherals. So we're gonna select that. And here, because we have the Torp display, we're gonna hit our mode button to be Torp display. Now, typically, if you don't have a Torp display, then your stock eco and sport mode button would work to activate 
sport mode and eco mode, just like you would on the stock. Now, you can also set up reverse with your thumb throttle. So if you have a thumb throttle, you can hit that and we're gonna calibrate it real quick. Calibrate that, hit save, and now, when you hold this down, when you're stopped, you're gonna go in reverse, which is super cool. Otherwise, this acts as a brake. When you're riding, you can set up how much power it's actually gonna give you, but when you push that, it brakes power back through your motor and back up into your battery. Once you get that thumb regen brake calibrated, you can see it added another tab called thumb regen. So I like this around 150 amps. You guys can go up or down from that depending on how much brake you want it to add. But that basically is using the momentum the rear wheel has to kind of actually charge your battery. So it's super nice. Um, just know that, that won't work if your battery is above like 90% of it because there's nowhere for the current to go. But it's definitely super nice on the road. It keeps your brakes cool and helps you slow down really quickly. Depending on how fast you want to go in reverse, you can actually set a reverse max speed limit and then reverse phase current. So that's how much power it allows you to go backwards. It doesn't let you go up super high, but I would start with a pretty low number and just mess with that. Like you really only need to go backwards, you know, three, four, five miles an hour to just test it out. Brake lever regen, if you have brake levers with sensors built in, stock ones, you can set that. We don't have any on this bike, so we're gonna go back down to zero. Throttle release regen. This is if you're letting your throttle off all the way, how much regen is it gonna kick in? I like somewhere between 10 and 15 amps. Um, so you guys can mess around with that. If you like a lot, turn it up. If you don't, turn it down. And then all these settings you can change with each mode. So eco, daily, or sport. If you have the display, you get all three. If not, you just get the two. And that is super cool. I like that you can do all these different settings for each one. So we're gonna go back and hit close and then we're gonna get back into our normal settings that don't have to do with braking and regen. So we have four settings here basically. We have an RPM limit. I like to set that at max because I don't necessarily like to have an RPM limit. I wanna be able to go as fast as I can. Battery current, this is gonna be a direct correlation to how much power you're running on the bike in kilowatts. So you will be able to turn this up as high as your battery will let you go. So figure out what your max battery amps or your max kilowatts of your battery is rated to run. So you would times your battery voltage, so in this case 60 times amps to get kilowatts. So 60 times 200 is roughly 12 kilowatts. It gives you a nice estimate there. So just figure out what your battery is able of running and do that. Your motor current is going to be your phase amp. So this is how much torque your bike will have. Um, anywhere above 500 is going to be more than you ever felt on your stock motor. So you'll have a lot of front end lift. This motor is capable of running 700. So we're going to set this up. I'm going to be about 550 phase amps. We're going to run 17 kilowatts on this bike, unlimited RPM, field weakening. We're going to turn up to 150 amps, which is the max that it lets you run. This is a basically a direct correlation with top speed. The higher you set this setting, the more top speed you're gonna get in this case. A really quick description of field weakening is when, you're, when a brushless motor is spinning, it creates a magnetic field that eventually, the faster RPMs that motor spins, then the stronger the magnetic field becomes. Hence, at a certain point, it starts to limit and want to slow down the motor. Field weakening is another set of current that goes directed into the motor to lower the magnetic field that is trying to slow down your motor and allows it to keep spinning up faster and faster. So that's the basic explanation. Higher you run, faster top speed you're gonna get. They also give you this sort of disclaimer saying the more field weakening you run, the hotter your motor's gonna get, the more battery you're gonna drain, but you will have more top speed. If you lower the number, you're gonna get more range but less top speed, little less power. So basically you guys can play with all those settings. We can go down to throttle settings and you guys can mess with all three modes. You can do your throttle smoothness and aggressiveness. You can change some uh, graph settings here with how you want your throttle to feel. Anyway, you guys just play with all this stuff, set it up how you like, and it's gonna take a little bit of experimenting to get set up how you want, but it's ultimate ultra customizable and super fun. All right, you guys, we hope that you got your bike all set up and now you guys can head out on the road, head out on the trail, experiment with the settings that you like. 
And if you haven't purchased these yet and you're still thinking you might want to, hit up Adam at Darwin EV, awesome company. He will get you set up, taken care of, and use our discount code link in the description. And thanks for watching, you guys. We hope you enjoy this video. Please hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you next time. See ya.